Growing up next to the Mississippi River, Samuel Clemens had only one lasting ambition, to be a steamboatman. He apprenticed as a pilot, got his license, and had two wonderful years until the outbreak of the war between the states closed all commerce on the river between St. Louis and New Orleans. Out of work, Sam took a stagecoach to the Nevada Territory to prospect for his fortune. One night, Sam and his friend thought they had struck it rich only to find next morning that their oar was worthless. Sam took a job as a reporter in the boomtown of Virginia City, where he began to make a name for himself as a writer. But solid success eluded him till he took the pen name Mark Twain. He wrote for newspapers and magazines. On a working trip to Hawaii, he wrote of that exotic land and his failure at surfboarding. Back in California, he gave a lecture, which was a smash. Sam had always been a great storyteller. He liked a story he heard about a jumping frog, which he wrote in his humorous style. Another smash published around the nation. A newspaper sent him on the first transatlantic cruise to Europe and the Holy Lands. The letters from his trip were eagerly read by people across the country and provided material for his most successful book, the Innocents Abroad. Sam married a well-educated woman from a wealthy family. Ever the entrepreneur, Sam patented a scrapbook, which sold well, and a new way to hold trousers up, which was not profitable. Two more successes, Sam co-wrote a book with one friend and co-wrote a play with another. He and his wife built a stunning home in Hartford, Connecticut, where they entertained the leading people of the day and where Sam had a third-floor billiard room for playing, smoking, and writing. On reflection, Sam could hardly believe his success as Mark Twain. He recalled his boyhood on the banks of the Mississippi, his time on the river as a pilot, the Wild West years, the characters and events of those days, and he wrote of it as nobody before or since has done. The Adventures of Tom Sawyer, Adventures of Huckleberry Finn, Roughing It, and many more. He wrote of biblical events in ways new to his readers, and on the platform, as he called it, he always left the audience laughing and wanting more. Sam realized that Mark Twain was becoming the most conspicuous person on the planet. The name and likeness of Mark Twain appeared on cigars, milled flour, bourbon whiskey, even beer from a small brewery. Duke Cigarettes put a brief biography in each package, and there were other tobacco products. He joined Shakespeare, Dickens, and other notable authors in a popular card game. The image of Mark Twain was everywhere. Some were serious and dignified. Some were not. Even Sam had a try at drawing Mark Twain, but gave up on the mouth. Sam made no apology for hawking the books of Mark Twain. His publisher issued a 22-volume collection, partly to compete against unauthorized publications. He had known poverty as a child and did not want to endure it again. Despite his high earnings, bad investments and large living expenses amounted to more. Sam moved his family to Europe, where living costs were less. He kept writing through extended stays in Italy, France, Austria, England, but he went bankrupt, and to repay his debts, he gave talks around the world. He traveled the equator, People loved him in all the English-speaking world. And Sam returned to America soon to be debt-free. By paying debts that were not required to be paid, he gained new esteem in the eyes of Americans. 
After the death of his wife, Sam Clemens began dressing Mark Twain in white. At the time, it was a uniquely distinctive fashion. Sam was on to something good, and Mark Twain's fame continued to grow. But for that jumping frog story, who knows? Sam would not waste the good name and great fame of Mark Twain. He was the American writer read round the world. If he could help topple a cruel and despotic king of Belgium, he would do it. If he could help elevate the status of women, educate blacks, resist imperial warfare, oust the czar, he would do it, and much more. Sam made Mark Twain a national treasure. A humorist, yes, sharper than all others, but without shallowness or meanness. A shining intellect who spoke in plain, understandable language. A student of science who taught young and old alike to open their eyes and minds. A student of mankind who always included himself in full membership in the race. An icon of 19th century America, the Republic coming of age. Sam Clemens knew his time was short. He told an august audience at his 70th birthday celebration that 70 is old enough. After that, there's too much risk. Sam allowed a young artist, Kate Carew, to sketch him at breakfast in his hotel. There isn't a person in New York better waited on than Samuel L. Clemens. Great unaffected dignity he has, great poise, great simplicity and strength. White hairs are not always admirable, I've heard, but Mark Twain's are. They're also beautiful. I am sure he does not try to say funny things. Only, he sees life through a glass that distorts every fact into a paradox. Or perhaps, it is the serious people that have a distorted view of life. I wish Mark Twain would say what he thinks about it. For a man who never completed grammar school, it was a highlight of Sam's life to receive an honorary doctorate from Oxford. Sam always said that because he came in with Halley's Comet, he would go out with it. April 1910, with Halley's Comet in the sky, Sam Clemens died and the nation grieved. He left us not just immortal works of literature, not just immortal characters, Tom, Huck, and so many others, but also the immortal character of Mark Twain himself a character with much yet to give, to say, to show. Mark Twain personifies who Americans were. He helps new generations find their way. He gives strength through his unfailing humor. He tells stories that endear us to our forebears, stories that puncture swollen notions and make us grin at the result. He brings his old perspective to our new problems and lets us work them out. We have always liked him and he is always there when we need him. Reports of Mark Twain's death are exaggerated. 